A podcast of one's own, challenging the status quo, keeping feminist discourse in the limelight, striving for gender equality. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of A Podcast of One's Own and you're joined by the majority of the exec committee at the moment. You're here with Nicole. Hello everyone. Oh, um, and Aurora, hi. <laughs> and Esther, hello, hello. And Vitaria, hi. So we're just going to get started. This is our session on body image. So everyone, bodies. Yeah, we right? All, we all so just say it. It's a personal one, a touchy one, I would say. Is it not? It can be. Yeah. It's. Uh, we just had our session on it yesterday. It, it was really successful. It was amazing. It was super wholesome. So good. Yeah. Um, we all sat in a circle and talked about our experiences and ate junk food, surrounded by our awards, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is this our first podcast since we won? Yeah. So yeah. just in case y'all missed the memo, we got... The best society. Well, society no, of the society, year. Yeah. <laughs> that, means, that means that we're but the best know. society, you know what I mean? We got society of the year and media award. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. If it's not because Nicole is the best and you're listening to a literal podcast, how amazing is that? <laughs> what, what? So, where shall we get started? We, we had discussions about the first time that we had been exposed to negative body image and a lot of people had experienced it from quite a young age which was upsetting and again we realized that it varied dependent on your culture and where you grew up mm. we we started out like just defining body image gen like in general uh because it's it's very easy to kind of confuse it with self-image in uh, as a whole and um confidence uh what's it called body confidence um, Positivity. No, some, no, or something else. That doesn't matter. <laughs> it was like j just like confidence in general. Mm -hmm. um, but we basically, I'll just run it down now. Just the definition that we had was uh, your perception of your own uh, body and sexual attractiveness in relation to the s the standards set by society. Uh, and it was really important. I uh, we thought to sort of pinpoint that it's very much about how you relate to other people and how you relate your body to standards that you haven't set out yourselves yourself yeah yeah we, i think correct me if i'm wrong but there was like a bit about negative image and how it was negative body image sorry and how it was a distorted perception of your own um, body image and i thought that was like really interesting the idea that to clarify that it's distorted so like to just put it like on white that you know, it's not how you actually look, but it's just how your brain makes it, makes your body looks to yourself when you look at yourself, if that makes any sense. But I thought that was absolutely like really interesting as a, as a point. Yeah, to yeah, the whole, yeah, that yeah. negative body image yeah. is, is really related to an inaccurate perception of your body. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. We broke it down into some a little bit of uh, body image theory, um, which was that body image in ten, in, in, uh, as a whole is divided up or made up of four aspects, which are perceptual body image, um, which is how you see your body visually, uh, affective body image, which, which is how you feel about your body, uh, cognitive body image, which is how you think about your body, and then the fourth one, which I think is really, really interesting and probably what we talked about most mm -hmm. uh, behavioral body image which is the way you behave as a result of the top the, the previous three ones um so the reason why we really wanted this uh, session in, to start with i think was because it's something that everyone that is it's relevant to everyone no matter if you have a positive negative or neutral body image uh, it's not something that you can escape. It's something that you are going to have because you have a body and you live in a society with other people. Um, and um, the way this affects your behavior and the way you lead your life in terms of confidence and what you try to uh, aspire to be and what you think you can do and your uh, strengths and weaknesses, and etc. It's really, really influenced by how you feel feel about your body. Or, and how you feel in your body. Yeah, I thought it was really good to um, 
listen to everybody's you know we shared ways to improve our body image and I thought that was really helpful in a way because on one hand everybody has thought about it everybody has methods you know those who have a really good body image do as well and they had to get those methods to get there and it was you know so wholesome to be able to share you know different ways that different tricks and that everybody uses to feel good about themselves but um it was also in a way it makes you feel like if you are struggling with negative body image it makes you feel less alone like it's less Mm. of a isolating experience but sadly it just shows you that it's a symptom of the society that we live in especially now when we're growing up i mean i see still growing up even though we're all in our 20s mostly (laughs) when we're growing up with like all we're bombarded by social media and by Mm. images of what should be perfect you know and it was really interesting um esther who did the powerpoint so she had a point how it's just an idea of society trying to feed you that you should look like something but that something is actually impossible to achieve Mm. so just that idea of why should I try to achieve it if it's if I know that it's impossible and this body image that now it looks perfect and it looks like it's the only thing that I should think about uh, in 10 years is not gonna be quote-unquote fashionable anymore that was really yeah interesting as well yeah yeah we went through a little um kind of like a Uh, we looked back at different body ideals uh, at different times in history, points in history, and it's uh, shocking how different they are. Um, And I think the whole, the main message that we took, that they can take from it is that um, the ideal shape tends to be whatever is most difficult to achieve at that moment in history. Um, Which is ridiculous because that's basically like setting up everyone for failure. Uh, if the standard is something that's supposed to be be really rare and um, if too many people are able to to reach that then the standards would change again because it needs to be this extraordinary thing that everyone is like a dream Mm -hmm. unattainable um, state Um, and yet even though it is everybody's still told that they have to aspire to this image which is completely unattainable which changes over time yeah, and not only aspire, but, like, dedicate, like, most their of their time and, and energy. energy. Like, mm-hmm. this is supposed to be a priority, especially then in women's lives. Um, obviously, body image affects all genders. Um, and we recognize that it's very complex in terms of the transgender and non-binary experience. Um, but, and hopefully we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll We'll have some of that spoken about in the podcast on... Uh, yes, by non-binary Edinburgh, but mm-hmm. um, we don't really feel like we should talk about it here now. Um, but it does. It is a feminist issue, though, because it's different. It takes a different shape. Uh, the um, the weight body image has on um, pun not intended <laughs> on self value in terms of how your uh, what gender you have. So for between men and women. Um, I had, yeah. So it dis it disproportionately affects women, um, because we're already oppressed and because it is, we're stuck in a sort of a cycle. I think where, um, attractiveness is our only bargaining power. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of that's super dangerous. Femininity. Well, yeah. The stereotype of what femininity is is that you have to adhere to this value, which is based on your beauty. You have to make yourself smaller and more palatable and agreeable and attractive. Yeah. I mean, it's horrible that the only way to kind of be successful, or the only clear way uh, that's marketed to be successful for women is to be beautiful and found attractive and sexy by men when that is also so so Relative. difficult and so decided by by ideals that are unattainable but I feel like it's also like super relative you know like mm. this idea of attractiveness that we have it's 
completely... It is a commercial attractiveness. It's not, it doesn't even subjective. exist because the amount of times that... Even in normal conversation, you talk to your pals and you're like, oh, look at that actor or actress. She's so hot or he's so hot. And your mate's like, no, but like, no. <laughs> and you're like... Yeah, yeah. So even that idea of attractiveness, it's even unattainable by those who should be like the models of attractive because it doesn't exist attractiveness doesn't mean anything we were seeing that video from like uh, that um, Nicole suggested what was it called um, that's what he said that's what he said so it was a group of men they were talking about the idea of body image and body issues and you know what struck me the most um, I mean in every conversation about body image that's what always looks very is very evident to me is that all of these people who have these insecurities or things that they don't see or they don't like about themselves I wouldn't even notice them Mm -hmm. if they didn't bring them up or if they don't point that out because you know somebody was talking about how they're quite you know um, like small body wise type and I was like I would have never like even thought about that like you know Mm -hmm. this is a healthy looking young man like you know what I mean it's just so relative and it's so bad that we're like so obsessed with this relativeness mm-hmm. of attractiveness if that makes any yeah, sense and, and even if someone brings up something that you didn't notice yourself even after they bring it up i usually don't think of it as a problem whereas to yeah. that person it is like it could be a big problem that they're not tall enough for yeah. example tall enough and i'm like that's not like you're tall yeah. and that's where it's the perceptual body yeah. image affects your behavioral body image um i think we, we talked a bit about how it's such a such an important problem in itself and it's often very related to development of depression or eating disorders and more clinical diagnoses but it's actually like just having negative body image is in itself like warrants treatment because it has enough it causes enough damage um to your mental health in itself to be a problem um and it affects so so many people um because it limits you and what you do in your social life you like statistics are so horrible about people that just say that they don't want to go outside they don't meet up mm-hmm. with friends because they don't feel comfortable in their bodies to like even just be active and walk around and do things um, which is just horrible I also feel like on a medical level there are so many practices that we consider normal that are used to you know alter your body body like cosmetic surgery mm-hmm. or but that's a, that's actually the safest way because it's actually with a doctor but if you think about it there are so many unsafe ways to achieve this ideal body image like you mm-hmm. Esther mentioned uh, tea detoxes or fatty mm. tummy fat, I don't even know what they're called mm-hmm. yeah. appetite suppressants medication that you can just buy medication online pills, mm-hmm. that's the corsets that the not- Kardashian are promoting if you know what I mean that's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, looks, terrible like, there are so many practices that women impose on ourselves, but that's not correct because that society imposes on our mm. that we think are normal and they're like I think just what, nothing, but they're actually like quite dangerous. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like really dangerous, and I think it's so scary because we sit here uh, and we're able to analyze it and know that these products and these people that. Uh, have some sort of ambassadorship with to these like for these products um we can un- we, we can see through it but what scares me a lot is that like young young kids and especially young girls are gonna see this and they think like especially today with the development of cosmetic surgery being so common as well like yes. even just small like procedures Maybe. people that like I, I remember when I was a kid like I would see, women with like fake nails and I wouldn't understand that it was fake nails I was like oh my god how did she get so long nails and such nice nails and like Mm -hmm. as I grew up I was like oh okay so like that's the thing that you can do but like on a bigger scale it's the same thing with cosmetic surgery I think like kids are not gonna know that that this is like altered reality like yeah that it's not natural Mm -hmm. and without you know without saying without bashing anyone for having cosmetic surgery yeah. it's really really dangerous i think to for for young kids to grow up in a world where this the ideals are not 
only difficult to attain, like they're impossible to to actually mm. reach if you're not paying money for it and changing it mm. artificially. I mm-hmm. think the idea of like paying money, like the intersectionality on a class level, mm-hmm. it's also very important because oh yes, ideal beauty is restricted to the rich. There's there's yeah. no nothing yeah. else you can getting your nails done once a month, but twice a month or three times a month is mm. expensive and that's the smallest type of like alteration that you can get done getting eyebrows tattooed even that's if really paying for exper- makeup really. paying for makeup exactly which is so normal in its everyday life it's restricted to the rich and no not everybody can afford to get like a personal trainer a nutritionist a gym membership yeah, and, and also have the time that, to spend the, their whole life yeah, no, focusing exactly. on what they look like. Because uh, if, if you're on, in a in a less uh, privileged economic situation, you're going to have to focus on other things, like actually paying your bills. Oh, yes, exactly. You know? And then are you also going to struggle with bad body image because you're not able to reach that impossible ideal? That's just so, so unfair. And it impacts so much of your life. It's a way of sort of like keeping keeping people keeping the lower class down essentially if you think mm-hmm. of that if you're struggling with severe body image issues yeah. then you're not going to feel confident or able to progress and you already have so many of these barriers and yeah. I think that is why it's so important to look at every feminist issue with the intersectional lens because yes. yeah, there are so, so many levels and again beauty standards which are um, applied to women of colour as well mm-hmm. and the, the European beauty ideals are seen yeah. as like the, the paramount like mm-hmm. perfect but I, th- I think it's like beauty. it's such an important point to make because I think it was a quote from the book The Beauty Myth by Nomi Wolf where she says that uh, like the f- a fixation on beauty is like a very very potent political sedative to oppressed groups because if that is what we have to focus on, we don't have time and energy to focus on other things like gaining some <laughs> some capital in just society as a whole. Uh, like, men can definitely, like, 100% struggle with body image on the same level as women can. But, uh, but in reality, it's not, it doesn't affect them as much in terms of career prospects or mm-hmm. respectability yeah. um, and stuff like that. Any any body shape of a man could be seen uh, like as a CEO. Yeah. And, and very, also representations very... in movies and media where yeah. you can still yeah. get varied body types. So you're seeing your body type represented in films and in mm-hmm. lovable characters. Yeah. It's like men's Intelligence, intelligence, or their perceived intelligence, is not diminished by their yeah. body type. Yeah. Whereas for women, as as soon as you're not, as you don't fit in the body type or the ideal, it automatically kind of means you're not capable. But women, yeah. which yeah. there's literally no comical. relation. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. And you know, this they're conversation. The characters there to provide a laugh yeah. that yeah. shouldn't be taken seriously. It reminded because me of, of this type. movie that sadly I love, but it's super problematic, and it's a duff. And does everybody has anybody watched that? I haven't seen so it. So the DAF stands for designated ugly fat friend. No. That's the entire part of the movie. That this girl who is, by the way, normal body type, average, beautiful girl, she's the designated ugly fat friend of the group, but she's still like and she's demonized for it and like she has this hot guy help her being fitter and then obviously at the end when she's fitter he oh, falls in love with trope. him. Yeah, yeah, it's That's a terrible horrible. movie. Um, sadly, I've watched it multiple times because. Of who I am as a person. Of who I am as a person. 100% correct. But, the like, you know. Just the fact that it has an abbreviation. You know what I mean? Like. Apparently, it's actually used. Yeah, but, it, like, things <laughs> like that is like. It's like when we were talking about MILF. MILF. Like, just oh the, the, the existence of an abbreviation like that just means that it's socially, like, accepted and people are, like, not really questioning it. Yeah. And I think it's especially in terms of that being, like, the ugly friend, quotation marks. It's supposed um, to be such an anomaly that it warrants. Yeah, but also I think, I th- but also I think so many people walk around thinking they are that friend. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, without being designated that for from anyone else, but you just like walk around thinking you are that one. Yeah. Um, 
Like, imagine being 14 and seeing that movie. And objectively, this protagonist is literally... Her body's ever Like, I don't yeah. know how else yeah. to put it. And seeing her and think, oh, she's the designated ugly fat friend. And maybe you're bigger than her and you go, what am I then? Like, what yeah. is... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just so... Mm-hmm. And the fact that nobody challenges that ideal or, like, says anything about that just shows you how deeply toxic yeah. body image is in our society. It's also just that that's also tied into, like, companies' clothing. Mm. Why is size 40 European? I don't know. Is that 12 in the UK? Mm, Why is yeah. that in some places considered overweight? I know. Or, like, not the average. That's complete. Like, no, like, yeah, I'm not trying to offend anyone here or whatever. I'm, I'm like, a size 40, 42. Yeah. But... Yeah. I have a completely normal body, but still yeah. sometimes I go and it's like, oh no, it's in the extra large. Oh yeah, that like, has happened to That me. makes it's like, no, no sense. Sizing is like total garbage. Is, yeah, it's... Sizing is terrible because it varies from shop to shop. Yeah. Like in top shop, you're a size. You go to Zara, you're another size. You go to Primark, you're a completely mm-hmm. different size. And we're seeing country to country as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. country oh, to yeah, country, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like I think... Which just ties into like cultural... Cultural, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think it's also never... I mean, I hate, like, just even the rhetoric of saying what is normal yeah. is horrible. Like, mm-hmm. average, Everybody fine, is. but then sizing doesn't even reflect the average of countries because it's always, the average is always going to be larger than yeah. what they s- deem to be the norm. There's, mm-hmm. There just shouldn't be, like, why why not just leave it as at the numbers? Just yeah. say, that's that one, that one, that one. Why do you have to put it in categories? Yeah. Because yeah. that makes no sense anymore. Uh, that's so true. Mm-hmm. Preach, sister. So we also spoke about ways that we could improve our body image and ways that we could uplift both ourselves and the people around us. Yes. Do you guys want me to read up the ten steps towards positive body yeah. image? Yeah. We can talk <laughs> about each of them. Um. So the first one is appreciate all that your body can do. Every day, your body carries you closer to your dream. Celebrate all the amazing thing your body does for you. I love that. That is my. Absolutely, like, favorite one. I think that one is so, so important because it applies to everyone and that includes, like, sometimes I feel like when people talk about this, they're like, oh, but appreciate your body is... Your body works perfectly. It's great. But that's very excluding to people that don't have a a Mm -hmm. physically healthy body. Yeah. Um, But appreciating what your body can do, you can do that no matter what sort of health state Mm -hmm. you are in because you're still alive. Yeah, mm-hmm. and your body is still trying its hardest, and you know your muscles are still working. You're still you can you can digest your food, and your you can see you things through your eyes, and like you can feel someone holding your hand, and mm-hmm. like it's just yeah. things like that. Yeah, I think what was again like very very humbling, and also um, like made me think about the inclusivity factor was um, like one of our members who's a wheelchair user talking mm-hmm. about following. So we're talking about social media and how damaging social media can be and how you really yeah. need to filter your consumption. And she had said that following somebody whose biggest achievement for that day was to pick up a pen and then managing to do that. And yeah. Yeah. just appreciating these beautiful little things that your body's capable of doing. Yeah. And recognizing just really how privileged and lucky we are to say that oh I can love my body because I can run and walk and do all these things yeah Yeah. 100% yeah I think also like literally every single positive experience that you've had in your life you have had in your body Mm -hmm. oh that's beautiful I never how can you not you know yeah (laughs) I love that yes it's true all everything positive your your body's been with you got the quote (laughs) tattoo (laughs) The second one on the list is keep a top 10 list of things you like about yourself that are not related to how much you weigh or what you look like. Uh, and to read that list often and revise it and add things to it. Yes, that's good. I think that's great. I mean, I don't have a physical list like that, but I think I it's do. a really good I've, exercise I've to start list. thinking like, what <laughs> what am I good at? What can I do? What do I like about myself? Um, yeah. <clears throat> and also, like, I think it ties into that one is to like, actively try to believe compliments that people give you Mm -hmm. rather than just be like thank you and not think about it but like if someone says something nice no matter what it is about it's like you know what maybe maybe Mm -hmm. they're they're telling the truth yeah (laughs) like 
the third one is remind yourself that true beauty is not simply skin deep. Um, that you are that you carry yourself with a sense of confidence, self acceptance, and openness, and that makes you beautiful. Um, no matter what you physically look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think starting with self compassion and mm. trying to see that as your first target rather than oh I'm going to love the way my body looks or I'm going to have that really positive body I might just just to be like no I'm going to actually treat myself with respect and not yeah yeah constantly the whole like, like degrade yourself. body positivity mm-hmm. versus body neutrality like mm-hmm. how much value do you put in what you yeah. like if you're body neutral you are in your body and you can you have compassion for it but you also know that your value is not tied to it mm mm-hmm. mhm but I'm I personally I'm a firm believer in body positivity. Oh me too. Uh but for those I know that a lot it, of people are like body neutrality step. is better but I'm like I think that's you you that works that's different mm-hmm. for everyone but depends on your journey I think. Absolutely. Yeah, what stage you're at really. Yeah. The fourth one is look at yourself as a whole person. When you see yourself in a mirror or in your mind choose not to focus on specific body parts see yourself as others. As you want others to see you as a whole person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, I've I've been there before, where you're like looking in the mirror. You literally only see one body. Yeah. Part. Or I would like contort my body as if. Oh yeah. You know, and it's oh it's it's horrible, but like it would be like the automatic go to when I would look in the mirror, as if it was just like the mirror was the male gaze. Yeah. And suddenly I'm like, oh, okay, there's my ass sticking out, my stomach's in, uh-huh. you know, my chest's out, and yeah, and it's. It's really yeah, surreal, but so it's weird. just like ingrained that you see the in media and all of the other images that yeah. that's the way that women are supposed to look, and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna make myself look like that. Yeah. 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 But even like I, I think about obviously it's not necessarily, hundred percent accurate through like a video, but I always find that whenever I see a video of myself like walking around or dancing or like whatever I'm doing where I'm moving, I'm like what my body moves because i'm so used to like you know you're used to seeing your body either like in a photo or just when you look at it but like you never see it from yeah. someone else's perspective. perspective like even if you see it in a mirror that's very just mm-hmm. it's still just you but seeing yourself move in like on video i think is really wild like yeah woo. the body posy panda uh, i love the, her yeah she's amazing that's her instagram handle you should check her out but she does i can't remember what they're called but she does these the like, jiggle jiggle dance videos yeah. yeah where she just gets in her underwear and just jiggles on video um she's amazing yeah. i love her and i think that can definitely also just not taking yourself seriously and it's fun yeah and I mean, I think it's going to, like, release endorphins anyway if you, like, force oh, yeah. yourself to do that. Um, but, yeah, that's really fun. Um, the fifth one is surround yourself with positive people. I think what, that's what? so we important. We got that on lockdown. Yes! Join <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>, Jen's <talk. laughs> yes. We are all positive people. Um, yeah. I think being around your friends is probably, like, the best thing. Like, people that actually... Because if you if you learn to remind yourself that, listen, I have friends right now that love me for who I am and they enjoy my company right now and and they're not trying to change my body. Mm-hmm. Why am I trying to change my body? Why mm-hmm. can I not? Like, who, who else do I really have to be enough for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was telling Esther yesterday when we were coming back from the session, like, I was seeing how, I mean, this group of people... Jan Sok and all my other friends truly I respect their ideas all the time I think they always come from a point of view of knowledge and actual belief on what they're saying so you know why, sh- why do I believe them in everything else they say mm. or I trust their words when they say anything else regarding any other topic but then when they say something positive ab- about me then I don't believe them that's silly because if I trust them completely and I look up to them on all these other levels and point of views, then I should trust them when they say something positive about me as well mm-hmm. because yeah. they're overall honest and true people. <clears throat> and if that made any sense whatsoever, but it, it didn't yeah, make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And what like, is that? Why, why are we conditioned to not believe compliments? It's just yeah. so surreal and it comes from... Like, I feel like I've had that issue from such a young age. Yeah. And like yeah. Instantly, your first response is to say oh no but blah 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 blah, and mm. then diminish yourself when somebody gives you a compliment and recognizing that and moving away from that i think is really important yeah for sure 
The sixth one is shut down those voices in your head that tell your body's not right or that you're a bad person. You can overpower those negative thoughts with positive ones. It's a really hard one. That yeah. that is tough. That's that's brainwashing. <laughs> like that takes like a lot of like patience, of I think, and you have mm-hmm. to be very very aware and like learn to 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 hear your thoughts and not just mm-hmm. like let them flow. Well, the what I was talking about last night is the one that helped me the most with that was like your filter and mm-hmm. stopping yourself from saying anything negative about your body out loud to anybody else. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because I had a you real problem how often with it, you, you're, yeah, you usually I noticed do that. that I was doing it all the time, and then that gave me the ability to, because then I would think it, and I'd be like, no, I'm not going to say it out loud, and then yeah. I was able to register how often I was even yeah. thinking it to then start yeah. tackling mm-hmm. that that mountain. <laughs> um. The seventh one is wear clothes that are comfortable and make you feel good about your body. Work with your body and not against it. I think that one is really nice, even though it does sort of adhere to the idea that you should dress for your you body know, type. Like, it's got that yeah, like I doubt that's it. what it means really, but but it has like this no, idea that you still, still yeah, mm-hmm. like if you're comfortable, then then you're more true to you and your body. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And again, like sizes, like I've seen when I was younger, actually using a coat hanger to zip my jeans up. Yeah. And like breaking coat hangers, trying to fit into like like, a small pair of jeans. Like for for who though? Because no one's even going to see that. And I'm just going to be in agony all day and not be able to sit down or eat because I need to fit into a size small. I think what it meant more, or like the way that I interpret it more is like wear things that make you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily things that flatter your body. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. if you have like a certain body type, sometimes they're like, don't wear, um, how do you call them, like straight lines or yeah, like, like A line dresses, like stripes horizontal or line, oh, horizontal right, yeah. stripes. Because it does, but like if you feel good in horizontal stripes, then yeah, you go for it, babe. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. nobody actually is gonna think, oh, that doesn't flatter. Or if they are, no. there's not a I mean, it's, ju- it's you know, just like a marketing like, trick yeah. to to put ideas into people's heads yeah. I think as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had this conversation with my, my granny again shout out to granny I'm so privileged mm-hmm. to have all these conversations <laughs> with oh, her oh and we met your granny amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah we love her <laughs> so much we love her so much and I remember <laughs> I think she was having a go at me about um, my little cleavage <laughs> ah, lovely <laughs> and yeah just being able to talk to her about things like that and be like granny if I if, really if I want to have my cleavage out and, like <laughs> I can, and then you know, just having conversations like that as to, yeah, you know, and I think something had come up about somebody being too old to have such a short dress yeah. on, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I mean these values or these ideas are like ingrained and they have been like enforced in her whole life, and she's like yeah. pushing eighty, which is incredible, oh. and she's become like so liberal, and it's amazing. I love her so much, um, but yeah, just being able to have these conversations that like. Granny, if you want to wear a mini skirt, you can, oh, right. <laughs> and that is fine. I think what's like what also goes into that point is uh, to not f- always picture this like uh, style or fashion sense or outfit that you feel like, oh, once I look like this, I can wear it. Oh yeah, and it's like mm-hmm. not I've thought that not with my try hair. to like yeah, like, like when I'm older, I can get a short haircut. <laughs> exactly, like it's so it's so. I think this one is a lot about like being with your body in the present, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah this is what I'm comfortable with right now. And I don't actually have to be comfortable in anything else. Like I don't have to be comfortable in the, I mean, ideally I would be comfortable in everything, but I don't have to be comfortable Mm -hmm. in whatever's on trend right now. I can wear what I am comfortable in. Mm -hmm. Uh, The eighth one is become a critical viewer of social media, uh, social and media messages. Pay attention to images, slogans, and attitudes that make you feel bad about yourself and your body and protest them. And Very being critical, funny. using like a critical eye to question the stuff that's coming up on mm. your feed and recognizing mm-hmm. it for how problematic it is. Yeah. And be like, bye. Yeah. Yeah, like, does, does this make me feel remotely negative mm-hmm. about myself? Block, mm-hmm. unfollow, yeah. unsubscribe. Yeah, I think Leap just seeing a, yeah. a variety <laughs> of different body body types. So I follow like a lot of these like um, like pages that are like empowerment for, for big women. And yeah. 
like to the extent that like these women are huge as well some of yeah. them but they just post and celebrate a whole variety of different body types and i mean you get the haters where people are like you're promoting obesity and you're like well it's uh, no she's no, just loving she's, herself no, she's just loving herself and accepting herself I she's mean, you not don't saying you post... have to look like this she's just saying this is what i look like and yeah. i'm here for it i think that's what's important what you just said like the change of saying it's not promoting as it you need to look like this nobody's saying you need to look a certain way or when you need to look bigger but you just need to accept people who do and i think yeah. that's the, like that's the difference because on the other hand with being skinny you need to be skinny you know yeah. that's the difference so they yeah. are promoted in two very different ways mm-hmm. i think one is about normalizing and accepting different body types mm. the other one is just pushing it onto people yeah it's not like you see the front of magazines saying with where like every single women's magazine is plastered with oh eat this many burgers a day to gain however many pounds yeah That's exactly. Not the reality. No, exactly the reality yeah. is like it's five just... different articles on how you can make yourself smaller mm-hmm. yeah which is enraging by like ignoring your body signals mm-hmm. and suppressing oh, yeah. what you actually need which is like oh you take yeah. a shot of apple cider vinegar to yeah. deal with those hunger pangs if you're hungry um, eat no, some water we're, 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 yeah. <laughs> Go to sleep. Right. I'm like, Thank let's you. just not let's even not. mention them in the let's podcast. Just They're it. just <laughs> censored. Um, yeah, yeah. My my Instagram feed is so positive right now. I think I it's like Instagram. it's one of those like really uh, dangerous places where you you can fall fall down mm-hmm. a rabbit hole and comparison can be just the worst mm-hmm. enemy ever. But if you cannot, it's also possible possible to find like to turn it. Like I remember, I went on like a spree and just unfollowed everything that made me feel shit and then I actively sought out accounts that mm-hmm. made me feel good that and well. now I'm like whenever I go into Instagram and I scroll I'm like yeah yay <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it turned into a positive and they've they done studies that um, you you actually release cortisol every time that you see an image of somebody attractive so you're actually like stressing yourself yeah, out like, and too much <laughs> cortisol just leads to anxiety and depression mm-hmm. And so every time, and you're comparing yourself as well to these beautiful people that you're seeing on every single swipe and just sitting there yeah. freaking out. <laughs> uh, and I think just because it is such a, like, it's a chemical response, mm-hmm. uh, no matter how, like, analy- an- analytical you are and how much you try to, like, be challenge aware it, and of it. Uh, it's still going to affect you. So, like, be really, really cautious with what you expose yourself to. The last two points, the last two points of that list are, do something nice for yourself and do something to help others. Um. And I just kind of wanted to jump to the last one because doing mm-hmm. something for other people, I think, is just so good in reminding yourself that it's just everything is not about. There are more important things in your body. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like, and you can, you can do things that are so important for other people Mm -hmm. and you could do them no matter what you look like Mm -hmm. like you can have a positive impact in other people's lives no matter what you look like so surely you can in your own life as well Mm -hmm. and people don't care what you look like when you're being compassionate and when you're a nice person and compassion it always comes back to compassion I think (laughs) compassion is key with yourself and with others Mm mm-hmm it is. Well, I think that's a beautiful place to end the podcast, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Peace, yeah. love. Ooh. Peace, love, and light from the hippie on the committee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>